I don't believe in any form of racism. I don't believe in any form of discrimination or segregation. I believe in Islam. I'm a Muslim. And there's nothing wrong with being a, being a Muslim. Nothing wrong with the religion of Islam. It just teaches us to believe in Allah as the God. And those of you who are Christians probably believe in the same God. Because I think you believe in the God who created the universe. And that's the one we believe in, the one who created the universe. The only difference being, you call him uh, God, and, and I, we call him Allah. Jews call him Jehovah. If you could understand Hebrew, you'd probably call him Jehovah too. Uh, if you can understand Arabic, you'd probably call him Allah. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his tremendous blessings. We remember that the malaika, the statement they made, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma allamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim. Glory be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of knowledge we have none except what he has taught us. Indeed, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are alimul hakim. And we remember that all praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has guided us. And without his guidance, we could never have been guided. And we remember when we speak about any Muslim from the past or the present or the future, Illa Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that no one has made this religion great. But this religion has made everyone that has followed it great. So the greatness is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the praise is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are not here to give any praise or to bestow any greatness upon anyone. And if there's anyone whom we have some obligation, it is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned, إِنَّ اللَّهُ وَمَلَائِكَتُهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِي يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا اللهم صلي على سيدين ونبيين وحبيبنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم Dear brothers and sisters, our discussion this evening is about a man whom the world knows as Malcolm X. However, <coughs> I want to be very clear. I personally have no interest in Malcolm X at all. Malcolm X was a Kafir. Malcolm X was a mushrik. Malcolm X was a racist, a nationalist, a man who said things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which he had no right to say. Yes, he was a reformed criminal, but even after he was reformed in his conduct, he was still saying things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which he had no right to say because Malcolm X was jahil. 
But the man who I need to speak about, his name is Al-Hajj Malik Shabazz. But we can't speak about him unless we come through Malcolm X. So let us be clear. Malcolm X lived a life which is impressive for non-Muslims. But for us Muslims, we have no concern about his life except three months before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his life. Three months before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his life, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance and by his determination, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed this man a new mission and gave him a new message. And it is these three months that we are concerned about and only those three months. So anyone who came to hear about Malcolm X because of the movies or the books or some other foolish impressions you heard about, then you should know that this man, Malcolm X, has nothing to do with Islam. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yahdi man yasha wa yudhillu man yasha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he lifts up whom he pleases and guides them. And he throws down whomever he pleases and leaves them to straight. So we want to talk about Malcolm X, the man, his mission and his message that will lead us to Al-Hajj Malik Shabazz. The name he took after he went to Mecca and made Tawbah and made Hajj and was purified and became guided and after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him a beacon of light that produced nearly three million Muslims in America. That's what you should know about this three-month-old Muslim. That he has three million grandchildren who because of his sacrifice or as a result of some of his sacrifice, he opened up a door that brought Islam into America by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the proof that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he can bring his deen and he can bring his guidance into this world even by an individual who themselves had very small amount of knowledge. Al-Hajj Malik Shabazz, when he died, he barely knew how to recite the kalima. Perhaps he did not know how to recite Al-Fatiha. Certainly, he did not have enough time to know how to perform his salah. So obviously, he didn't know Arabic. Obviously, he didn't know Tajweed. Obviously, he didn't know Aqidah. He didn't know Sirah. He didn't know Fiqh. All the things that people say, if you want to be a good Muslim, you got to know all these things. Yes, all these things are good things to fortify us and give us the equipment. But one doesn't have to have all of that to have Iman. And if the Iman of a brand new Muslim who only knew how to say Allahu Akbar or La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that's all he knew and after that Allah took his life. Maybe that sacrifice was enough to be a platform for Iman for three million people. Whereas there are people who are holding books of Aqidah, books of Fiqh, Books of hadith, books of tafsir. MashaAllah, they have, they have commanded the book of Sibawe, one of the most eloquent books of Arabic language. They have graduated from the universities. They are students of knowledge. But maybe in their whole life, 
they did not produce even 30 shahadas. We say their reward is for Allah, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what they got. And on the other hand, the reward is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who calls even one per person to enter Islam from their hands, said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Whomsoever is gifted or blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cause one person to enter Islam through their hands, the Prophet sallallahu said, khairum in one place, min humru ni'am, is better for them than red camels, maybe like brand new Land Rover. Better, than, better for you than a Mercedes, Rolls Royce, or in another riwayah, khairum min dunya wa ma fiha. Better for you than the whole dunya and what is it in it? One person, just one person. If every Muslim here having Iman could give one shahada a year, we will command this whole city here in a matter of five years. One shahada. We didn't say 10, 30, 50. One. Your neighbor, your colleague, your co-worker, the person who you do business with, the people who see you in the street all the time, your professor in the school. One. A year. So in 10 years, you will give 10, and if there's 1,000 here, this is 10,000. If 10,000 people took shahada from the Muslims, which is here, 10,000 the next year will take shahada from them. Because last year, last year, 100,000 people entered Islam from the UK and from North America alone. 100,000. And I tell you, brothers, that 80,000 of them took the shahada from a new Muslim. Eighty thousand took shahada from a new Muslim. Fifteen thousand took the shahada from a newly practicing Muslim. And five thousand, maybe they took shahada from some students of knowledge or whatever. Allahu alam. And every now and then we hear that a scholar, a scholar, he gave shahada to someone himself. We don't say anything is wrong with that. We only say the scholars, they are sitting waiting for us to bring the people to them. But some of the people who have less knowledge, we are going out and taking the knowledge from the scholars to those people. May Allah reward all of us, the scholars, the students of knowledge, the brothers who are in the street, uh, the brothers who are on the edge, all of us all together, inshallah. And we must also say, from this 100,000 people who entered Islam, 79,000 from America, and over 28,000 from the UK, and we don't know, maybe 3,000 or 4,000 from, from Australia. Seven, six to seven of them are women. Six or seven out of every 10 are women. In the last three months, mashallah, we delivered about 279 shahada. One hundred and eighty-three of the hundred two hundred and seventy-nine women. So for some reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is attracting the hearts and the minds of women towards Islam faster than the men. So maybe this is uh, to make up for the male chauvinism. So we want to speak about this man, a controversial personality whose autobiography is in nearly every library in the modern world. A person whose name is associated with change, resistance, and sacrifice. A man who dropped out of school in the sixth grade but received an honorary PhD from Harvard Law School in Boston, Massachusetts. An individual whom heads of state, presidents, chairmen, 
kings, intellectuals, and educators, they quote him concerning ethics, commitment, and inspiration. A man, a minister, a missionary with a powerful message who embraced and declared the kalima La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam only three months before he was made shaheed. Who is this man? What was his mission? And what was his actual message? Malcolm X was born Malcolm Little. That was his name. Malcolm Little. He was born in Omaha, Nebraska, somewhere in the Midwest of the United States. His father was a Baptist minister and a political activist, a follower of a man called Marcus Garvey. His mother was a school teacher. Malcolm saw his father killed by a European white racist. People who call themselves the KKK, Ku Klux Klan. Similar to people who call themselves New Nazis or Aryan Brotherhood or other crazy names that people give themselves to put pride into their color, another form of Jahiliya. And because his father was a proud man and a resistant man, at a time when black people were treated like animals, his father stood up and he did not bow down. And so one night, they came to burn his house down, and he defended his family. And they took him out to a railroad track and tied him to the railroad track until the train came, and then after that, let him go until the train severed his head. So Malcolm saw his father decapitated this way by these white racists. So that's what put in his heart from the beginning, hatred against white people. After that, Malcolm's mother, under trauma and mental stress, was committed to an insane asylum. And so at the age of nine, Malcolm became an orphan. And he dropped out of school at 12, that's the sixth grade. He moved to a city called Detroit. And while he was in Detroit, Malcolm dealt with the science of the streets. And a lot of you brothers sitting here tonight, you know what the science of the streets is. Slinging, making money any way you can. Buying whatever you can from this same haram money. Selling drugs, selling women, using drugs, shooting people. Becoming gangsters. Crime has never changed. Crime has the same face. Crime has done in the same place, in the same manner. It's just a different calendar. And like Malcolm, most of those who chose or who choose this way, you will wind up soon in two places if you don't make Tauba. You will wind up in the prison. If Allah is merciful to you, you will wake up and practice Islam there and come back out and find a new life for yourself. Or if Allah is not merciful, you will wind up in an early grave. You don't have to believe me you can think that you're going to be an exception and you're just a fool. So Malcolm, 
After he left Detroit, he went to Boston. Big gangster, selling lots of drugs, pimping lots of women, living a life as a gangster. And at 19 years old, Malcolm got his first taste 15 years. 15 years in the prison. In the prison, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he reformed his conduct. Malcolm was a drinker. Malcolm was a drunkard. Malcolm was a drug seller. Malcolm was a criminal. But while in prison, he met some people who called themselves the Nation of Islam. Now, they were not Muslims, but that's what they called themselves, Nation of Islam. I say they're not Muslims because in their own newspaper today, they're the same people. They say Allah came in the form of a man in 1935. A black man. And his name was Master W. Farad. So that's kufr. That's shirk. And they say that this man, Master W. Farad, who was supposed to be Allah in the person, nominated and selected Elijah Poole or Elijah Muhammad as his messenger and prophet. That's another form of kufr and another form of shirk. So kufr, kufr, shirk, shirk. So Elijah Muhammad said that there was no paradise, no hereafter, another form of kufr, another form of shirk. He said that paradise is in this life and hellfire is in this life and resurrection is only in the mind. So this is kufr again. So kufr, 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 kufr now. And he said that the Quran was given to him by Allah, Master W. Farad, to be interpreted for this time only for the black man. Another form of kufr. So five times kufr. So they're pure kafirs. The man called Louis Farrakhan, Minister Louis Farrakhan. No doubt. No doubt he is the student and the follower of Elijah Muhammad. And he has built a platform upon that same platform. And we have to give credit where credit is due. They are Kafirs, pure Kafirs, because they are still saying today exactly what Elijah Muhammad said in 1945. They are still saying today in their newspaper, anyone can go to www Nation of Islam or www The Final Call. Go to www, the final call, or www, the nation of Islam, and you will see that they say today exactly what Elijah Muhammad said, 1945, no difference. Even though Minister Farrakhan, as he calls himself, makes hajj maybe every five years. Even though his followers, he's taking with him every year, 150, 250, 350 of his followers to hajj every year and he's being invited to make Hajj by the people in Saudi Arabia. I don't know why. I don't know why. He's the guest of the government and they're making Hajj every year. And every single year in Chicago, he has something called Savior's Day in Chicago. This is their, their big day. This is their Eid. And every year, the Azhar University sends their representative to Savior's Day. I'm not blaming the Azhar University. I'm saying the biggest sheikh from there is there every year. One of the imams from the Haram will be there in Chicago every year. The leaders of the biggest Islamic organizations in America will be there every year. Why those people are supporting 
Minister Farrakhan, why they are praying with him, why they are sitting with him, why they are giving him credence, I don't know. But Allah is the witness. You can get it on DVD. And he says clearly, if I'm wrong, why is the whole Muslim world represent representatives here with me today? So this is one of the reasons, na'udhu billah, that his organization continues because it is given the support and the credence and the recognition by some of the biggest organizations, Muslim organizations in the world. Although they are pure Kafirs, meaning Minister Louis Farrakhan and his group. Those who are supporting him, they are not Kafirs, they are Muslims. Why they are supporting, why they are recognizing, Allahu A'lam. It's not for me to say. But I have to make the record straight. Khalid didn't say this. You can go to www, Nation of Islam, www, Final Call, and you will see their Savior's Day. Put it in there, Savior's Day, Nation of Islam. And you will see all the videos, and you will see all the shuyukh from the Haram, from Jordan, Mufti from Lebanon, the Mufti from Jordan, the Mufti from so-and-so, the Mufti from this place, the Imam of the Haram, the head of Isna, the head of Ikna, the head of all the Islamic organizations, they are there with him, shaking hands and embracing him like he is a Muslim. Walau. In spite of that, his organization, it is not growing because one of the beautiful things about Islam is that a liar is a liar and his lie does not grow after him it either stays where it is or it becomes smaller and smaller but a prophet is a prophet and his message grows after him greater than it was even while he was living so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has caused this nation to grow the real Islamic nation and he has caused the nation of the liar to be as it is. And when, he, and when Farrakhan dies, that lie will become smaller and smaller until it rots away. And we ask Allah that those people who are following him with sincerity, that they will become Muslims, inshallah. We have to give credit, however, that Elijah Muhammad, although he was a liar, although he was not a prophet, Although he made said lies about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was a social reformer. What is a social reformer? A social reformer is a man who helps people to come from the lowest form of social degradation until they come to a level of self-esteem. Elijah Muhammad was successful in causing men and women who were drunkards, drug addicts, prostitutes, pimps, criminals, he was able to reform them and clean them up and make them into productive people, fathers, mothers, businessmen, and d uh, distinguished people and respectful people, men like Malcolm. Because Malcolm was not the only one like himself. This is what you need to know. There were thousands of people that was like Malcolm X but they did not have his voice. Allah didn't give them the same gift. But their conviction, their sincerity, their social reform was just like Malcolm. Because they said Islam, because they said Quran, because they stopped drinking, because they stopped drugging. You see, when a person stops drinking and drugging and fornicating and stealing and lying and all these kinds of things, they become clear-headed, clear-hearted. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because they were making shirk, He never gave them the huda. He never gave them the huda. And there are many people. Jehovah Witness, they are clean people. Jehovah Witness, clean people, but they are mushrikeen. The Mormons, clean people, mushrikeen. Seventh-day Adventists, clean people, mushrikeen. So many of the people, they are clean, they're morals, they don't steal, they don't lie, they love God, they do this, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أُولَٰئِكَ هُمْ 
شر البريه ان الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات اولئك هم خير البريه they are sharrul bariya because they are making shirk against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are lying against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are lying about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they have polluted the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Allah has polluted their lives and he has prepared for them jahannam even though we might think they are pious so Malcolm went to prison and while he was in prison he became part of the nation of Islam. Malcolm stayed in prison not 15 years, but nine years. And when Malcolm came out of prison, mentally, he was powerful. Even though I mentioned that he dropped out of school in the sixth grade, Malcolm said that after he cleaned up his mind and cleaned up his body, after he gave up cursing, smoking, drinking, after he pledged his life to Elijah Muhammad and considered himself to be a Muslim, he said, I never lied after that. I never stole after that. I never cursed after that. I never lusted for any women after that. I never drank. I never drugged. I never smoked another cigarette after that day. He said, and I never gambled anymore because I saw myself to be a servant of Allah and a soldier. With that mentality, he began to read on his own. The first thing that Malcolm did is that in a period of four years, he memorized the entire dictionary. Can you imagine a man memorizing the entire dictionary? 23 or 27,000 words with their definition? It was in four years, four times 365, you see that's about 1,500 days. 1,500 days, so if he memorized 20 words a day, that's what he did. He didn't memorize Quran, he didn't get no baraka for it. But nobody in here memorized 100 words in the dictionary. This man wanted to learn the language of the enemy. He said the enemy defeats us through language. So I want to defeat them in their language. So the first thing I want to do is I want to memorize the whole dictionary because that's their language. After he did that, Malcolm said, I finished. I read and I wrote essays on 172 books. All the top books that all the people read in the colleges and universities about science, about math, about history, about botany, about biology, about sociology, about psychology, about different people. He said he read it and he wrote. So when Malcolm got out, Malcolm was a walking classroom. He was the spokesman for Elijah Muhammad. And in a period, after Malcolm got out, in a period of six years, Malcolm built a national organization of over 112 masjids. They didn't call them masjids, they called them temples. It, uh, uh, Muhammad's temples of Islam, he called them. 112 all over the country. He built a national newspaper called Muhammad Speaks a newspaper that is still running today from 1954 until now. How many years is that? 50 years, this newspaper that he established is still running today with a different name. It's called The Final Call. So from a seasonal criminal, con man, drug seller, pimp, prison inmate, an angry and hostile man, a racist, to a principled, disciplined, courteous, non-smoking, non-drinking, non-drugging, man of honor, man of integrity, the ideal husband, the brother, the vigilant community activist, the articulate speaker, 
the self-appointed international ambassador of the African Americans, and finally, and most important, in the last three months of his life, Allah allowed him to discover the real Islam. And he was the kind of man that was searching for the truth. So when someone told him, Malcolm, if you really want to know what Islam is, I suggest that you go make Hajj, go to Mecca. I dare you, go to Mecca, I'll pay for it. And Malcolm, because he was curious and he was a man searching, he said, okay, I will go. And Malcolm said, I remember the letter. He said, I arrived in Jeddah thinking myself to be a Muslim minister and I felt like a fool. I realized I couldn't pray. I didn't know how to wash. I didn't know anything about Islam and I felt like a fool calling myself a Muslim minister. And there he discovered what is the Quran. And there he discovered who is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there he discovered who is Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And in Jeddah, in the court in Jeddah, he took the new shahada and qualified himself to perform the hajj. After he took that shahada in Jeddah in 1964, in November of 1964, six days later, he was writing a letter from Muna, preparing himself to go to Arafat. In Ihram, having made tawbah, having cleaned himself, having asked Allah's forgiveness. And we know the Prophet says, whomsoever ask Allah for forgiveness, in, in the surah called Furqan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and whomsoever, wa man taba, uh, whoever makes tawbah, wa amil saliha, or whoever makes tawbah, and he makes a tawbah of sincerity, and after that he does the amal of goodness, for innahu yatubu ilallahi mataba. Then his tawbah is accepted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a perfect and clear and clean tawbah. So the Prophet said, Whomsoever performs hajj with sincerity, he comes back from the hajj as if he came from the womb of his mother. So he went as Malcolm X, but he came back as Al-Hajj Malik Shabazz. Pure, clean, with the same dynamism and sincerity. Mukhlisin al huddin Mukhlisin al huddin Hunafa. Wanting to establish the prayer and to pay the zakat. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, deen al This is what he accepted. So Malcolm became Al Hajj Malik Shabazz, who made tawbah and realized his mistakes. He took his shahada, he performed his hajj. He looked death in his face. He said, on my way back from Mecca, I visited seven countries and the CIA and the FBI and the International Interpol Police and others plotted to try to kill me at least five times. You don't have to ask yourself why they were plotting to kill this man. Because the enemies of Allah at that time is the same enemies of Allah now. And the same enemies of Allah at that time was the same enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before. Because Allah does not change his sunnah. The same enemies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to Ibrahim alayhi salam and to Musa alayhi salam, the same enemies Allah gave to Sulaiman and Dawood alayhi salam, and to Ishaq alayhi salam, and to Yahya alayhi salam, and to Isa alayhi salam, and to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, and to the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, the same enemies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to us. The enemies never change their faces and they never change their way. 
So Malcolm said when he became a Muslim and they knew that he had become a Muslim and he had made his commitment to come back to America and let the world know the truth about Islam and to let those people whom he had led astray to put them on the right path of Islam to say that Elijah Muhammad is a liar to say that the nation of Islam is a corrupt misguided mushrik criminal organization and that the United States of America I'm going to put them into the world court and let the world know the crime they have committed against my people once he said that and wrote that letter and it came out in the New York Times in November 1964 the enemies of Allah began to work they tried to poison him three times when he arrived back in America he said every place he went he saw the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plotting against him every place to try to blow up his car to burn up his house to shoot at him to poison his food to do this to do that this was al Hajj Malik Shabazz the caterpillar that turned into a butterfly in three months the coal that is like a rock from the ground that turned into a diamond in three months the jahil man who turned into a shahid the kafir who became mu'min and qualified himself for al-jannah wallahu a'lam now this deen has produced such men over and over Malcolm was not phenomenal it's just that at the time that he came he was the most phenomenal of the African Americans that America had ever produced America had never produced an African American like Malcolm like al Haj Malik Shabazz but this Dean has produced such men and women over and over and the Prophet وسلم, said the believers are like mines of gold and silver the believers are like mines of gold and silver the best of them in the Jahiliyyah will also be the best in the day of Islam if they believe so let us look we see Umar ibn al-Khattab the worst in his opposition to Islam but the best in the Jahiliyyah and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Umar Islam when Allah guided Umar into Islam Islam changed the Muslim changed no Muslims could speak about Islam publicly no one could do it until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Islam to Umar and after that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to Islam Hamza these two men Hamza and Umar opened up the gates of Islam and the kuffar who did not see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they saw Umar they saw Hamza and Allah gave to the Prophet وسلم, and gave to this deen Umar and Hamza both of them in their opposition in their corruption how many people did Umar kill how many Muslims did he oppress what kind of man he was how many slaves did he beat how many Muslims did he whip Umar this man read his life and see how immediately how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed his heart how Allah changed the heart of Hamza the womanizer the drunkard the man who lived by himself just to hunt and to kill and to fight Hamza radiallahu an. when Allah touched his heart for Islam subhanallah no one had the heart and the courage like Hamza yet Hamza he was not he was not alim he didn't have a lot of knowledge what about Ubaidullah ibn Jarrah 
What about Khalid ibn Walid? A man whom the Prophet sallallahu said, no woman have given birth to a man like Khalid ibn Walid. He meant in terms of his courage. He meant in terms of his ability to fight and to defend and his vigilance. It was said that Khalid ibn Walid, he would never sleep on the ground while he was out in the field. He let his soldiers sleep, but he slept on his horse. And it was said that Khalid ibn Walid, he had the courage of 10,000 men. 10,000. That if 10,000 Roman soldiers knew Khalid was coming with 100 men, they did not want to meet him with 100 men. 10,000. Allah gave to this religion men like Khalid, men like Ubaidullah ibn Jarrah, men like Hamza, men like Tariq ibn Ziyad, who went with an army to Spain. And when he arrived in Spain with his army, he took them up to the mountain. Not the big army, small army. He took them to the top of the mountain and then he ordered the, bo uh, the boats to be burned. And he told them, in back of us is the ocean and in front of us is the enemy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What choice you want? We know that Tariq ibn Ziyad was that small handful of men. He conquered the whole of Spain. Tariq ibn Ziyad was not an alim. He did not have much knowledge. But mashallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him love for this deen and commitment for this deen and iman. And then we had men like Salahuddin al Ayyubi, who also, he was not Arab. Mashallah, he conquered and took back Quds for Islam when no one else had the power to do it. Salahuddin al Ayyubi. He also, he was not alim. He was mujahid. And what about Umar al-Mukhtar? Umar al-Mukhtar, an old man who did not fight against the Italians until he was 71. And after being 71 years old, he fought the Italians on horseback. 47 battles. 47 after he was 71 and they had tanks and all his soldiers had was horses and what about Al Khattab in Chechen they also was riding horses fighting against the Russians with their tanks all their sophistication and the sons of Khattab and the brothers of Khattab, they are still fighting those Kafirs today. And with all their planes and all their tanks, they cannot overcome the Iman of those soldiers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He also was not Alam. He did not have that much knowledge. But he spent his time from the time he's 14 years old until he became Shahid out in the Ghazwa fighting against the kuffar. And we have seen many others who we don't need to know to call their names fighting for Allah against the kuffar, willing to die a hundred times while we sleep to allow us to rest and to enjoy our properties and our homes to bring some dignity back to Islam some of them are still fighting today. Islam has always produced these kinds of people. We have seen the valor, the sacrifice, the commitment of individuals who themselves, they were not scholars. Although this Islam has produced the best scholars and the scholars are our fathers. They are Waritut al-Anbiya. Yes, they are. We must respect them. We must love them. We must make 
reference to them. We must protect them. We must rely upon them. But we must also know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to this deen two kinds of people. The scholars and the students of knowledge who remained until the mujahideen came back. But this deen has been preserved on the inside by the ulama and the fuqaha and the students of knowledge. But this deen has been protected, it has been preserved, it has been made dignified, it has been made wide and known to the world by the mujahideen. And don't think that those who's dead, don't think that those who've been killed, that they are dead, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, don't think like that. No, they are alive with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their souls are in the bellies of green birds that go around the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like lamps until the day of judgment they will be released. These are the people that bring glory to this deen. Because if they did not, the scholars and the students of knowledge, they would not have any place to sit. They wouldn't have to have any place to sit. There would be no safety. There would be no dignity. These individuals who themselves were not scholars, they came from the worst conditions. They came from the worst of Jahiliya, but they brought dignity and victory for this deen. They place inspiration into the hearts of the young Muslims. Inspiration into the heart and hope into the heart of the old Muslims. And they put fear and they put trauma in the hearts of the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To you brothers from the street, I love you. I'm also from the street. And I don't mind if every now and then somebody can see the street in me. They say, you know, that brother Khalid, sometimes he be like talking like, like he's from the street. <laughs> you know, sometimes he be kind of like Jahid. Well, I apologize for that. Because you can take the man out of Brooklyn, but you can't take the Brooklyn out of the man. So if you look real close, you're going to hear a little bit of, and you're going to see a little bit of Brooklyn. And, you know, if things heat up, you might feel some of the Brooklyn. <laughs> and I thank Allah. I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I never want to become soft. I never want the Kafir to think that they can walk over my face. And I prefer for my sons, if they don't have much knowledge, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they will never allow the kafirs to walk over their faces. And so you young brothers who love Allah, who love the Prophet wasalam, but you have some defect in your hearts, you have some defect in your deen, clean up your act. You have time, inshallah. Come to the masjid. If you can't pray five times a day, crawl into the masjid and pray once a day. Sneak in the mosque. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about what the brothers are thinking about what you do. Allah know what they do that nobody knows about. Don't worry about what you're doing is wrong in the street. The mosque belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and belongs to you too. The mosque is a place to come wash up. Clean your act up. Clean up that money. Clean up that dirty money. Clean up your association. Don't fear your homeboys like you ought to fear Allah. Because your homeboys is waiting for one of you to come to the mosque to do the right thing, to say the right thing, and to come back to them and say, listen brothers, we all, we still cool, everything is all right. But man, look, man, we got to come back to Allah. We got to come back to Allah. We got to give the respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pay the rent. Pay the rent. Paying the rent, make the salah. Pay the rent on the house. The house is me. 
pay the rent. How you pay the rent? Make the salah. Make salah even if you're doing something wrong. Don't let anybody tell you that because you're doing something wrong, don't make no salah because it don't make no difference. Whoever tell you that is a fool. It's like the man who came to a scholar and said, listen, I killed 99 men, 999 people. What you think? You think Allah will, give, will forgive me? The, the, the scholar told him, no. No, he, you ain't gonna be. So he said, all right, fine. I might as well kill you too. <laughs> What's the hikmah in that? What's the hikmah? The hikmah is that the scholar should have told him, in Allah ghafur rahim. The worst Muslim, the worst, is better than a pious mushrik. The worst Muslim is better than a pious kafir. No matter what Allah gives the kafirs, the whole dunya means nothing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't worry about what he gave them. The Prophet said, if this whole dunya had the value of the wing of a mosquito, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wouldn't give the kafirs a drink of water. But because the dunya don't mean nothing to Allah, he give them and he give us, and he doesn't care. But Allah loves the Muslim who calls upon him from time to time. Allah loves the one that does the wrong and then says, oh Allah, please forgive me. Astaghfirullah rabbi min kulli dhanbin wa atubu ilayk. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntum min al This is what you need to say. Because you and me, we can become better than al Haj Munik Shabazz. He was just a small Muslim. He was just a small flash in the pan. He wasn't a Salahuddin al Ayyubi. He wasn't a Hamza, radiallahu an. He wasn't a Tariq ibn Ziyad. He wasn't a Khalid ibn Walid, radiallahu an. No, he was just a man who found himself by the grace of Allah and made tawbah and made a commitment and his life ended in three months. You brothers from the street, you soldiers on the edge, that's what I call you. And we need some soldiers on the edge. Because sometimes the brothers that's in the inside just get too pious. You get too soft. Sometimes there's business that need to be taken care of that only the soldiers on the edge can take care of. Look to the seerah of the Prophet them, and you will understand that even in the time of the Prophet them, there were soldiers on the edge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them to the Prophet them. He had no responsibility over them but they took care of some business on the edge. <laughs> Look to the seerah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet Wasallam, when they come to you and, 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 and give sadaqah, take the sadaqah and purify it for them. Purify it and make dua for them. But you don't have to take no responsibility of what they do, because they're on the edge. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Lots of brothers in here on the edge. <coughs> Make your way from the edge into the middle because that's where the safety is. Don't stay out on the edge because the edge is dangerous. You can fall off at any time. Any time. If you die on the edge, you don't know where you're going. You don't know where you're going, brothers, if you die on the edge because you don't know, you ain't making no salah. You ain't paying no zakah. You eating haram. You drinking haram. You doing haram. You speaking haram. You carrying the weight of the haram on you day and night. So the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can come. Allah can. He says in the Quran, Hamim, Tanzilul Kitab min Allah al Aziz al Alim. غافر الذنب وقابل التوب شديد لقاب التوب لا إله إلا هو إله المصير. So brothers, make your way from the edge 
towards the center. Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all forgiven, most merciful. You have to make tawbah. And after you make tawbah, be the best that you can be. You ain't got to be what nobody say you need to be. Don't think you need to come in from the edge and right away you need to grow your beard. Right away you need to put on a abaya, you need to put on a kufi. Right away you got to learn the akida. you got to memorize the authentic ahadith. You got to learn the sira. You got to hit on the haq. You don't have to do all of that right away. Because some of the brothers who have done that, they still on the edge too. They in the center in the words, they in the center on the outside, but maybe inside some things they doing, they still on the edge. And there are some brothers who they didn't grow the beard yet. They didn't put on the abaya yet. They didn't learn the aqidah or the ahadith or the seerah yet, but their heart is mukhlis. And if their heart is mukhlis, Allah will accept from them, inshallah, from the heart that's mukhlis. So we don't make the judgment. We say, establish the prayers. Clean your money. Clean your company. Clean your heart. Spend an hour a week with a student of knowledge. Come in the circles where the brothers is giving up the knowledge, even if you go to sleep, you're going to still get some blessings. Eat with the brothers. Walk with the brothers. Come to the masjid. Come to the UMA. Ask the brothers. Brothers, look, I just need to sleep one night here. I just need to get out the street and get my head together. Because if you spend an hour a week with the people who have clean hearts, the people who have clean lives, the people who are giving them ilm, knowledge, the people who have a love for the Prophet wasallam, the people who have made tawbah and after that did not return back to the crimes. If you spend an hour with them, it'll be just like a hundred hours that you spent with your boys in the street. And you might have a chance to get up off the edge. But if you don't spend that hour, don't think, brother, somehow or another, some kind of fairy tale, Disneyland, inshallah kind of thing, it's just going to happen somewhere along the line. You're going to find yourself on a, on a cold slab next door, and it'll all be over. You know what I'm talking about, the cold slab next door? And then it's all over, brothers. Your money, your girlfriends, all the bling bling you had around your neck. You know, all them, them jazzy cars, ZX, or whatever you riding around in. One of your boys gonna be riding around in it. One of your boys gonna be wearing the bling bling. And one of your boys is gonna have your little girlie in the seat next to him. One of your boys gonna move into your apartment. One of your boys gonna be wearing your clothes. One of your boys is gonna take over that area that you were slinging. And one of your boys will be on the edge where you was, but now you inside the grave. Brothers, pull yourselves together. Clean your heart and you will see the real sweetness of this deen, like al Haj Malik Shabazz. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have unusual knowledge. al Haj Malik Shabazz, he was not perfect. He did not have unusual knowledge. And you don't have to be super pious. You only need to be decent. Be sincere. Be real. As the boys in the street say, be bout it, bout it. You, some of y'all know what that means. Bout it. Be bout it. Be real. Be straight up. Don't be phony. Don't be a fake. Don't be like you think you're trying to act pious on the outside, but you know it ain't really happening on the inside. Be the best Muslim that you can be. That's what the Prophet Sallallahu said. Do as much as you can. If Malcolm X became al Haj Malik Shabazz in three months, from the worst to the best, from zero to hero, then you can do it too. Fear Allah, wherever you are, as the Prophet said, Ittaqillah haythu ma kuntu. Watbi as-sayyah bil-hasana tamhuha. 
وخالق الناس بخلق حسن Fear Allah wherever you are and follow up a bad deed with a good one and that will wipe it out and after that have good behavior towards people. Now follow up a bad deed with a good one and it will wipe it out doesn't mean you can do a haram action and you can just do a good deed that wipes it out. Don't mean that. Because the only thing that wipes out kabair is tawbah. So if you did a major crime, you got to make tawbah. But if you did something small, follow it up with a good deed and that will wipe it out and after that have good behavior. Dear brothers, it's never too late to correct yourself. One of you that's sitting in this room here could be the next savior for Islam. One of you may become one of the major representatives of this deen in this country or in this part of the earth. We don't know who you are. We don't know who that person is. They could be in the womb right now or they can be in this room right now. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he bless us and forgive us, have mercy upon us and guide us, unite our hearts and take the nationalism out of our hearts and take the, uh, the, the separate ideologies out of our hearts, take the divisions out of our hearts. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless the ulama, the fuqaha, the students of knowledge who make the sacrifice. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our Sheikh Tajuddin. We ask Allah to bless the Majlis Ashura here. We ask Allah to bless Sheikh Shadi and all the brothers from UMA and the brothers from the Australian New Muslim Association. We ask Allah to bless all the Shabab. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all the Shuyukh. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless the small ones and the big ones. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he accept our dua and he accept our prayers and he accept our fasting. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that in one year that this mosque not be big enough for the Muslims of sincerity that we have to add a whole new mosque. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that every young Muslim in this room that would like to have a wife get herself a wife in the next 30 days. We ask Allah that every sister that is available for marriage, that she become the first, the second, the third, or the fourth wife, but she get married. Amen. This is what we pray. We want all the shabab to have a wife. We want all the sisters to have a husband, even if it means having a problem. I'd rather have a halal problem than to have a haram one. And we ask the mothers and the fathers to move the traditions out the way and let your sons and daughters get married. Your son got a room. Let him go get a honey and bring her in his room. He don't got to get no graduating certificate and got to get a house and a car and got to get his own bungalow and this and that. Something going to happen before he get there. You better wake up and smell the coffee. I'm telling you, sisters, mothers, better watch your daughters. You trying to hold them out for a, a, white, a white knight in shining armor. And I'm telling you, some of them Kaffir knights in some stained armor is getting some of them. You're going to wind up with Fatima coming home with a haram baby, a haram grandson. Don't say it is not going to happen because it is happening. So I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we bring the real feeling for this deen and try to solve some of our problems and understand that it doesn't take a lot of knowledge to solve the problems and it don't take no great amount of faith to be able to deal with the kufr and the shirk and the corruption of this world. It called for people who have special iman. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the sincerity of al Haj Malik Shabazz, if any act he did was sincere, we ask Allah to give him 
all the thawab, the hasanat, all the ajr, equal to the number of people who have become Muslim by those who he helped to become Muslim. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finally that he caused this deen in this country and in this land to enter every house and every place until no one will be able to say that they don't know what is la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Are you tired of all these annoying ads on YouTube? Are you worried that a haram video might pop up? Well, the One Islam TV app is here to solve these problems, inshallah. The One Islam TV app is 100% free of any ads and is safe to browse for your peace of mind. Watch or listen to lectures and lessons while you work, rest, or drive with your device switched off. Watch videos on demand or download videos and watch offline. Watch hundreds of high-quality produced Islamic reminders, Quran learning videos, stories of the prophets, and so much more. Two to four new videos uploaded daily, inshallah. One Islam TV is 100% run and owned by Muslims, which means a small amount you pay for your subscription is a sadaqa jariya, continuous charity for you as we use the funds raised to continue producing more beneficial videos and reminders, inshallah. The One Islam TV app is now available on Apple devices, Apple TV, Android devices, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku so you can watch on most devices and smart TVs. Download now for a free 7-day trial. May Allah reward you for supporting our work.